Hey guys, it's Crystal here, and I wanted to do a dedicated what I've been working on sit down writing update. So it's been a while since I've done one of these. I had been semi regularly creating update videos when I was working on my fantasy novel Anuna, which um, was called Crown of Ice while I was querying. A little over a year and a half ago, I decided to set that book aside, not necessarily trunk it, but just set it aside for now. Uh, after querying, sorry, the cats are ringing. After querying, I found that that book was not ready, even though at that point I felt ready to start querying. The response that I got gave me um, a lot of insight, but two particular pieces of insight. One, the type of fantasy that I'm writing is not really to market, and the market for traditional fantasy publishing is not there. So what that tells me is that I need to dedicate myself to this novel in a different way with the intention to eventually self-publish it, which is definitely something that I am keeping in the back of my mind and considering it. Like, I'm putting this in my toolbox. I am learning all that I can about self-publishing. I am looking into how to market, how to create it, how to make it look good, how to go wide. So I am looking into all aspects of self-publishing with the intention of eventually self-publishing that novel. But the other piece of insight that I gained was that I need to rewrite that novel. So it's at that point gone through two major, major, two major um, rewrites, like from scratch. It went through multiple edits and multiple revisions and multiple betas in both of its forms. But even now, um, I'm not happy with the direction that it took. Like I, I have grown as a writer and I know that that novel can go in a different direction than what it went in in its current iteration and I think it'll be stronger, I think it'll be a better plot and a more engaging plot and I think it will make the characters that I have a lot more sympathetic and just like amusing and stuff so I've been work- I, I, I'm not working on it now but I started working on that novel back in 2012 so it will almost be 10 years since I started on that particular project. Now, as I've said to people who um, I know personally in like my real life, who have asked before, that was not my first project. That is not the only project I have worked on in that time. I have been essentially writing regularly with the intention to publish since 2006. Um, that is when I started my very first attempt at writing a novel, and that is also like another story that is sort of like a story of my heart that one day I hope to get published. Um, it's part of a, a very loose series of novels that are tied together thematically but not in any direct correlation, and they're based on things that I love like fairy tale retellings and historical romance and stuff like that. That's a whole other series that I know I can make better, um, but it's just the nature of writing that as you write more, you grow as a writer, you learn more, and you developed your craft. If you hear scratching, those are the cats in the background. But we're going to proceed regardless. So I have essentially right now five works that are on hold waiting for the day that I can focus on them and turn them into something uh, that is both entertaining and that meets my desire to have a story that does what I want it to do and that you know I can put out there and be happy with I'm not they're not in a state where I would be happy putting them out so they, I know that they, they need more work. I also know that if I'm going to go the self-publishing route with any of those, that I need to invest money, I need to save with the intention of, you know, getting a developmental editor, getting a um, book cover. I, I am a person who is 
fairly well versed in graphic design, I feel like I could I could create my own book covers to market. Um, I'm observant and I have a good eye for that kind of a thing, I think. I hope. But I have the graphic design experience. I don't think I would have a problem with that. But there's a lot involved in self-publishing. Like I could I could cheap out and just do it, but that's not the thing I want to do. I want to make this look like quality and professional work. So I would have a lot writing on that aspect of it. But that is all tangential to what I am doing right now. So for the last year and a half almost, um, I have been working on a romance novel. I had never written a romance novel before. It is my first romance novel, despite the fact that I have been a fan of the romance genre since I was like 14 and picked up my first romance. Uh, probably before, but I just had never read a strict romance until I discovered a copy of Nora Roberts' Born in Ice at my local public library. I love romance, and I never thought I could write romance, because for some reason I kept telling myself that it was one of those genres that if I tried to write it, it would ruin it for me. I, I wouldn't enjoy the, the stories as much because it would become work. <laughs> These are all lies I told myself. Um, essentially to not think about it, I guess. I have not had any problem enjoying romance while writing romance. My, um, my story has not crossed into any of these other stories. I don't feel like I am pulling from any of these books or that it, it has influenced me in any way. The kitty cats are right under you, so if you hear the bells, that's what that is. And I have really enjoyed it. I set aside the manuscript that I was working on at the time. When I started this novel, it was a story that came to me very suddenly and in many ways is is all kinds of aspects of me and my history and my personality put into this book. It feels like the truest to me book that I have ever written, uh, which is saying a lot because I, I do feel like every writer puts a little bit of themselves into their work. So I I wouldn't say it's autobiographical in any way, but there's a lot of me and my history in this book. Now, it is a contemporary romance. The working title is Before You Called Me Baby. Um, it is based on a song that I have enjoyed thoroughly over the years. And it is set in Knoxville. Randomly, I had been to Knoxville in 2019, and when I had the idea for this book, Knoxville was the setting that was in my head. I knew it would take place in Knoxville. And um, I'm trying to get her to go away. And so when I, when I had this idea, it came to me, I hate to say it came to me in a flash, but it did kind of come to me in a flash, and I knew that I wanted to work on this project right away. So it tore at me a little bit because I have never just stopped a novel midway, even if I don't plan to do anything with it, I finish what I start. So I was in the middle of rewriting another story, uh, which is a historical YA, um, loosely historical fantasy novel. And as I said, I had always worked on fantasy. I had been working on like urban fantasy and historical alternate universe style fantasy for years. That, that, that is my jam. And I love that. And that is, it's the genre I love. It's one of the genre, genres, it's one of the genres that I can't get enough of. And I, I don't always find what I'm looking for in. So I was trying to write the books that I'm looking for. And that is always what I'm trying to do. Just trying to write the books I would want to read. But this book just came and I had to write it. So I set that one aside and I started working on it. And, um, it was like mid nano Raimo 2019 and I just quit one story halfway and started on another one. I kept going. I finished it. I read it in February 2020 and I was starting my revisions in March 2020. And we all know what happened in March 2020. So, I'm itchy, sorry. So, I like many of you, I'm sure, was struck with pandemic brain and couldn't get any work done for several months. I couldn't get the energy or the motivation to focus on the novel. I couldn't get into the, the positive headspace that I wanted to be in for this novel because the world was on fire. 
and it took some time. But I knew that I wanted to get back to this, so I came back to this novel, I, I took that read through, I wrote myself my notes, I, I read books on craft while I wasn't writing or revising because I knew that I wanted to, to stay in that writer mindset even if I wasn't actively writing. So I took workshops, I read books on craft, um, I just tried to like surround myself with writing even if I wasn't writing. So I did that and eventually I did get back to it. I was I was able to get back into the right mindset around the late end of May 2020. So a year now is when I, I dove back into the book. I, I did a major rewrite, not a full rewrite from beginning to end, but it was a major developmental rewrite. Like a lot of aspects of the plot needed to be changed. I realized that the only way I could make this story work without my um, male protagonist coming off as a total jerk was if he had a point of view. It just wasn't working if he didn't have his point of view because I knew his motivation but my reader wasn't going to know his motivation. It wasn't coming through well enough. So I had to go back in and weave in a second point of view, do all that. So in many ways it became a different book and then I, I started time tracking. So I know exactly how long it took me to write this book because I've been tracking every single minute that I have written. Whereas before I used to track words edited or words written, etc. I was now tracking time. So I can, I can look back and say, okay, it didn't take me a year and a half. It took me 117 hours to do the first draft and it took me 120 to do the last draft that I just did. So I know now how much time it actually takes me to write a novel, even if that doesn't look like days, even if that looks like months when I actually look at the number of, of sprints individually in terms of days. So in, in all actuality, it took me about three months per draft. Um, I have found that this book has come together much more easily in terms of process than any book I've written before. Partly because after uh, a long time now of writing, I have developed a process. I now have a solid process that I can turn to and that I, I see myself going back to again and again. I had already taken all the lessons of all the other drafts and novels I had written and um, streamlined it. And I, I feel solid in my practice at least and in the way that I write in the way that I schedule time for writing block it out on my calendar in the way that I give myself small sprints and small victories to get to the final draft without like the dreadful like oh my god I need to write how much so I don't think of it in terms of I need to get 80,000 words or whatever I, I think of it in terms of like I need to get through this section I need to get through these chapters I need to get through these 20 minutes today. And that's how I do it. So at this point, Before You Call Me Baby is in its, what I think of as draft 3.5, take that arbitrary numbering as you will, and it is in beta. So right now I am beta-ing. I have already gotten feedback back from one reviewer, which was positive, obviously with comments for changes. And I have it out to a second beta, who had agreed to read several months ago. I read for her and she agreed to read for me. And now I'm seeking a couple more betas. Um, I like to have at least a handful of betas per round um, to try to find those patterns and common themes. I do find that I myself am a very critical reader of my own work. I edit, um, not creatively, but academically. So I am a, I'm, I'm a, very critical reader when it comes to reading my own materials and always have been even when I'm doing just like professional writing and just highly critical of my work. I'm also a very um, clean writer. I tend to write clean drafts overall in terms of proofreading aspects of it. So there's that. Obviously I want to get more eyes on it but right now I want to get some commentary feedback, find the common themes. I already found confirmation for one question that was already in my head that I knew I would probably need to fix in this draft and one of the comments from my first reader was essentially pointing to that very question. So I, I now have my confirmation of what I suspected. 
Um, so that's what I mean. I, I usually find that when I get feedback from my betas, it's usually stuff I had already noticed myself and it's just confirming what I suspected. And then, you know, like the stuff that I haven't actually considered and it, it's eye-opening. So it's, it's a, a tedious process to go through all these stages, to edit, to revise, to edit, to revise, but it is necessary if you want to have a good draft. Now, all this, because I do intend to try to traditionally publish this, um, looking over my body of work and, as I said, how marketable they are, this is probably the most marketable thing I have ever written. I also have uh, a series essentially planned out. So most romance novels, comes in, they come in threes if you can get a series deal. Usually most writers of romance plan things out with like interconnecting stories. So as I was writing the first one, I could already see where I could take it into two more novels. And I have, I have those concepts written out. I don't have them drafted, I don't have them outlined, but I have them jotted down. I know what those should look like. So that, that's where I am right now. I am getting feedback on my draft. I, I, as I said, I've been taking workshops. I just took a workshop on the querying process. I have a query template to work with that has already been drafted. I know my comp titles. Um, right now I am comping this to Alexis Daria's You Had Me At Ola and Alicia Rye's um, Modern Hearts series, Modern Hearts, Modern Love. The one that features the right swipe, that series. So if I have to comp it to two series currently in the works, it would be those two. Um, before I made the collect the connection to Alicia Rye, I was comping it to um, you had me at Ola meets Hulu's High Fidelity. <laughs> because I do feel that my main character, Janetsi, is a lot like Rob in that in that particular adaptation of that book. So that is where I am with writing. I won't be writing or editing at least for a few weeks while I wait for those um, comments and then I'll be analyzing those. But in the meantime, I'm going to be writing up my agent list. I'm going to be writing those drafts um, for the different agents that I would like to query. And those are just practice because I know that until this draft is done, it done, you know, in its cleanest state, in its most ready state, I can't really send those out. But I am preparing because once once I'm, I'm solid, which will probably be, I knowing myself, knowing how long it takes me to write, and, you know, how life and my chronic health issues kind of slow me down, I'll say it's probably going to be ready by late fall. That's, that's my goal. So by late fall, it gives me time to get comments, to do some revising, it doesn't need to be deep revision because at this point I do think I will just be addressing issues rather than in-depth, like complete developmental and, and overhaul type rewriting. And then I'll be proofreading, um, reading out loud probably in that process too. And then I will hopefully be querying and fingers crossed maybe one day this will be a book and I hope it will be. And as I said, because self-publishing is a thing that I have been looking into, I'm not discounting it for this series either. Um, I do like the idea of being a hybrid author. That is kind of my goal. I would love to start with traditional because I don't think I am in a place right now with my health and my work and just like my life in general, all the distractions in it to become essentially a small business owner and go in the self-publishing route entirely. But I wouldn't say no. Um, so that is where we stand. So that is my very lengthy, tangential, rambly update on where I'm at writing-wise. I have an 82,000 word romance novel in a current state that is readable, but not ready for querying, but hopefully to be ready for querying before the end of 2020, 2021. What year are we in? Oh my god. Um, so yes, 2021 before the year turns. That is the plan. So that's that. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about my writing process or anything, I'm happy to share. I've gotten a lot of inspiration from the Heart Breathings channel, so if you are trying to write and you need some inspo or you want a whole bunch of excellent guides 
check out Heart Breathings. Um, that's by author Sarah Cannon. Her channel is amazing. I feel like some of the information I've gotten from her channel has been better than all the information I've read in every other like publishing and writing book that I have read. And um, uh, I don't remember now the name of the author, but I want to say his first name is Osiris, or their first name. I believe they're gender non-binary. Um, it's called Fix Your Damn Book, and it's really good. It's probably one of the best uh, writing to publishing books I have read in a long time. And then the Six Figure Authors podcast has been another one on top of um, Joanna Penn's The Creative Pen podcast. So a lot of my downtime involves also just like consuming stuff about writing so that I stay in that mindset. So that is all. I'll put those links down below in case you're interested and I will hopefully have an update sometime this fall. Bye guys.